everything is launched. I mean everything, literally, that's the intro. Today's podcast is sponsored by Devolutions, whose remote desktop manager can help you stay productive and secure even when you're away from the office. We'll have a little bit more from them later. Shout out to my friends over at Devolutions and Max and all those good guys. Anyways, uh, diving into today and this week and everything else that's been going on, uh, <laughs> like everything launched, everything launched. So you have uh, Microsoft launching stuff, you have Apple launching stuff, you have the Sony launching stuff. It was just a big week of everything getting moved out the door. And of course, we have your questions as well that we need to dive into that I have uh, forgot to pull up on my screen. So, you know, just bear with me while I forget to do everything. It's a Friday. It has been a busy week of, um, I don't know, just, just stuff in general. Anyways, uh, on to what has been happening into the world. Uh, Microsoft had a big week, obviously. Uh, they launched their consoles, but more importantly than that, uh, they shipped .NET 5.0. If that does not sound enticing to you, you probably aren't a developer and that's quite all right, but... Uh, .NET 5.0 is a pretty big deal, something they've been working on for a very long time. It is going to help modernize the infrastructure that a lot, a lot of .NET developers are using. And also, Microsoft is warning this week, and, and this has been something that we've known about from um, many different areas of the world. Stop using SMS for two-factor authentication. Now, I say that with a massive caveat. If you have... If you're not using two-factor fa authentication, you really, really should because it's a very secure way of securing your content and passwords just aren't all that great anymore. I mean, you, you read every week about how things get compromised and so you need to turn on 2FA. And what Microsoft is warning here is that using an SMS or text message-based text message -based service for your 2FA is just not really good. And they outline the reasons why. And so what they recommend are using apps such as obviously Microsoft Authenticator. Um, Google also has one as well. And there's some third party ones out there too um, that you should you know, consider using uh, for your, your security. So just the warning here is get away from SMS, go to MFA obviously, but get away from SMS when you're using MFA. Uh, other things happening in the PC world. Uh, this is not all that surprising, but uh, the total PC market, this includes tablet by the way, it continues to grow actually. It, it's up over 20% year over year for volume sales, which is not all that surprising. I mean, people continue to buy new PCs. We have some really big hardware launches happening this year uh, on the gaming side from like the 3090, although I don't think that's going to be factoring into this particular equation. But there were a total shipments of 124.5 million units. Now, I remind you, that's shipped not necessarily sold and so there could be some overcompensation there uh because of you know what happened in the spring with people buying up every single laptop and device that they could get their hands on so we might see things slow down a bit but given how the world has transpired the past you know, let's just be honest all of 2020 um this isn't all that surprising to see pc sales way 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 up and so I would expect that trend to continue a little bit, although some of the manufacturers have started to say, hey, we've seen things slowing down a bit and 2021 doesn't look to be like a blockbuster year like 2020 has turned out to be in terms of PC sales, but just kind of keep that in mind. Speaking of laptops and PCs, uh, Apple made their big splash with their M1 chip. And so we're still waiting to get like the, the full real story out of this. There's a lot of benchmarks floating around and I've been saying this for years and every review I do, I'm not a huge fan of synthetic benchmarks, regardless of how good and or poor they look. Typically, sometimes they can say, eh, things are trending a little bit better, but there's so many more variables than just running a single application to get things up and running for benchmarking. Like it, it benchmarks tell like 5% of the overall performance story because they don't take into battery life. And so you can ramp up performance if you sacrifice we know that story already um candidly the m1 chip on paper looks good it looks like apple is making the move that is going to help solidify their future and help the further differentiate them and more importantly i think for them get them away from intel and that way they can control their own destiny in terms of performance and release cadence and everything else because just like all the pc manufacturers it doesn't really make sense to launch a a new laptop without intel's latest chip so you're basically waiting for intel to release their chips and then you can launch it and so apple is just removing that from their their product cycle and it will help them long term i absolutely do believe that but i'm not like eating these m1 chips for breakfast yet because i think there still needs to be some narrative to be told now that being said we should learn the more about the story next week once these things get in the hands of everybody else uh apple is also releasing big sur although they had a major issue with their servers effectively getting hammered or ddos uh, a friendly ddos and knocked off a bunch of services 
and it made the update process either a not happen or it made it so app applications could not launch it looks like things have been resolved for the most part but as always you might not just want to be an early adopter unless you're willing to live with some of that wonkiness that happens every time you install a new operating system so that is sort of the big highlights of the tech news of the week here's a quick message from our friends over at devolution Remote Desktop Manager helps you centralize, manage, and secure access to remote connections, tools, and passwords on a single platform. Streamline your daily workflow with powerful automation tools and securely launch remote sessions without even seeing the credentials. No more pesky sticky notes with passwords on them. And so other things that are happening this week. This week was a another big week of just launches. Like last Friday when we talked about uh, gaming news, by the way. Um, it was the last podcast before the consoles hit the world. And so this week we have seen the PlayStation 5 launch. We have seen Microsoft launch both of their consoles. Um, it, it was just a big week for gamers, which is a good thing at the end of the day. Um, everybody gets to play their games. Hopefully you're playing the right ones that you, you know make you happy and they work and they run and you haven't had many ma major issues. There haven't been at least too many wide widespread reports yet of major catastrophes on PlayStation or Xbox side. Uh, the biggest one on the Xbox side appears to be potentially disk drives not working as expected. Um, and so we'll wait and see if anything pops up on the PS5 side. But hopefully nothing you know more major than that impacts the market. There's always going to be issues. I guarantee there's going to be PlayStation 5s that have problems. Um, it's just you know, the nature of the beast of building millions of consoles. And that's just, that's just how it works. Um, Phil Spencer did say this week that this has been their biggest launch of an Xbox history. And so to me, I'm pretty sure that means they've sold over a million consoles uh, on launch day based on some of their past facts and figures that they have released. Microsoft has gotten real shady. Right, shady may not be the right word, but real shy about sharing numbers. And right now, there's going to be a race between, or a non-race, I should say, between Sony and uh, Microsoft. Because if Microsoft comes out and says, hey, we sold 1 million consoles. And then PlayStation comes out and says, hey, we sold 2 million consoles. Like, you can see how that's uh, really just a really bad PR narrative. And so... Um, that's just, I don't know when, who's going to talk first. Actually, I bet Sony will, I can almost guarantee it because Sony, uh, based on their financials has to be a little bit more transparent about how much revenue and where things are going with their consoles than say Microsoft, where gaming is only a small percentage of their overall revenue on the Sony side. Gaming is a much larger percentage of that revenue. And so they have to be a bit more transparent about their actual path and, and everything else like that. So I bet, um, and, and that could be three months from now, candidly. It could be that during their earnings that we actually learn those figures. But anyways, the games have begun in also Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is now out. Um, and so you can go play that. That is a true, proper next-gen title with support for next-gen features. So uh, it's definitely worth giving that a spin because that will actually showcase some of what your next-gen console, either on PlayStation or Xbox, can actually do. Uh, speaking of sort of, this is a perfect marriage of things that I love. Uh, PUBG is coming to Microsoft Azure. Uh, the, the parent company behind PUBG is porting all, or porting, bringing all of their backend infrastructure over to Microsoft. Um, yeah, that's just a big win for Microsoft. We've seen a couple of those guys do that now. And Microsoft has been making a big play to try to get more developers onto Azure. Uh, although they, most of them are primarily on AWS or, uh, you know, that's just where they are. Um, xCloud is also now available in Australia, Brazil, Japan, and Mexico. If you are in any of those countries, uh, I believe it's starting on the 18th, which is next week, you will be able to start playing xCloud if you get into the small private beta and then eventually Microsoft will, you know, add more and more people to it once they get the data and feedback that they need to understand as long as the service is working as expected. So on to the questions of the week, which I tweet out uh, at BD Sam's. Um, usually on Thursdays around noon Eastern time between 12 and one is typically when that that happens. And so question uh, number one comes from Sherlock Holmes as a hybrid. I have an Xbox Series X with I, have a, I got an Xbox Series S this week. Have you had a chance to test how much more power the Series X has over the Series S? I'm really happy with the Series S, S so far. Here's the thing. If you're really happy with the Series S, who cares about the X? As long if if the Series X, S is meeting your needs and you're happy, don't just don't look at the X, right? It's like why would I don't see an app called series. You could try searching the app store. Well, thank you for that, Siri. I absolutely did not ask you that, but apparently series S can trigger 
the uh, my little Apple Watch there. There you go. Anyways, if you're happy with the S, don't even look at the X because all you're going to do is be like, ah, so it's a little bit better. Um, depending on, and if you're playing on a 1080p screen, there's no reason to look at the X at all. Like, th there's none. If you have a 4K TV, yeah, then there might be a reason. But if you're happy with the S, don't even look at the X. Just don't even worry about the price difference and just go on with life. Um, I, I really mean that because all you're going to do is be like, okay, now I got to go spend another 200 bucks uh, to get that thing, um, which you that doesn't even make sense because then you have to sell your current one and then try to go get the, just keep the S, be happy with it. That, that's all that matters at the end of the day. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Uh, Usman says, do you think though, yeah, this is funny. Uh, do you think the voice assistant novelty has worn off? Has your usage of these assistants changed over the years? Yes, it has. Um, I used to be a pretty big proponent of the Amazon device. Um, I don't think I have any actually in here. And we had a lot of our house wired up to it. But it just, the novelty just honestly kind of wore off, at least for me personally. And the, the bigger challenge was is that, so I had so many different systems between like Sonos, Hue, uh, MyQ, uh, Nest, and trying to keep these things always wired together Together, it just became a pain in the butt like one thing would break with an update or I change my Wi-Fi password or something like that and then try to get all this stuff rewired again just became more burden than it's worth realistically what just became the easiest to use is the the centralized app on my phone which is Apple's home kit and just using that now it's hilarious because Siri stop um, just fired off on my watch when I was talking about the Series S. The only real thing I honestly, I think we use it for anymore is actually just setting timers for when we're grilling. That is like the primary thing uh, we use it for in this household anymore. Um, and that that's really about it. So yeah, I, I definitely has worn off um, over the years. Uh, Side Choker says, uh, why is there no manual mode for the camera app uh, for the Duo? Um, it's a good question. There's a lot of oddities like that, and I think you hit on a couple more of them. And it says, why are, are some apps like OneNote uh, that has no sticky notes or Edge so different than the normal Android apps on the other phones? Do you know if Microsoft Money or Excel is coming to Europe? I don't know about the money in Excel. It should. It should, but I don't know what it's going to tie into. That's a whole different thing. Um, it's This is one of the oddities is that Microsoft has these apps and services that are on Android today, like a, a single screen Android phone. And then when they're brought over to the Duo, they're not quite as robust or complete yet. It's mostly because they aren't what Microsoft calls enlightened to take care or take care, take, to you fully utilize both screens. And sometimes that kind of just screws things up. I don't know. It, it's one of those oddities of the Microsoft world where you launch a piece of hardware and then the, sometimes the software is just not fully optimized for it, which is really kind of odd. Uh, and then he says, do you think Microsoft will offer an anti-glare on their displays? I don't think so. Um, I haven't, at least I haven't seen anything. And it says, I hope you're doing well and safe. And I hope you are too. But the anti-glare one would be interesting. I just don't know if they're actually going to do it. Like that's a, uh, I could see why they would do it. And I think Apple does on some of their, their higher end Macs, like that nano it etched display or whatever they call it. But right now, Microsoft appears to be all in on glossy displays. And I, that, they haven't shown any reason that they're going to be changing from that. That most of the industry is glossy displays too on their mobile devices. Uh, JNBCK says, but thinking about building a new PC for flight stem still on a third gen i7 and the games crash fairly often. Do you think I can get by with my current 1066 gig to save cash on the graphics card? So the first thing I would ask you is, do you know why the game is crashing? So clearly there's a pretty big bottleneck somewhere in your machine that is causing this thing to crash. And so that's going to be your first target. I'm assuming based on what you have written is that you've decided or figured out that it is the i7 that that is causing the machine to crash. So here's kind of my methodology on, on this. I would get the best CPU you can and everything else minus the GPU. Here's the reason why. You know, keep your 1060. It's not that if the 1060 will be holding you back if you re refresh the other components in your PC, but you'll see where I'm going with this. Get the best CPU that you can. The reason being is, good luck getting like a 3080 or 3070 right now. If you're going to be going out tomorrow or next week and you're going to be building this PC, you're not going to be getting a graphics card right away. It's just, they are extremely hard to find right now. And if you do find one, you're going to be paying a serious premium for it, which is not worth it. So what I would personally do is get a higher end CPU, something that will hold off longer, use your 1060. And then when things start to settle down, maybe it might even be six, seven months from now, who knows? Uh, then I would look at potentially trying to see about how I could upgrade the GPU. And so so that's what I would do. I think the 1060 should be okay for like definitely 1080p, nothing higher than that and probably lower settings. But as long as your CPU is the bottleneck there, then that is the route that I would go. 
Uh, JG ACR says with flight simulator, uh, will flight simulator 2020, uh, for the Xbox series X or S ever happen? I believe it is. I believe that was an, I, I thought they announced that. Um, I know it was definitely, uh, been playing around with, um, not me personally, but bringing that, that title over to the series X because it is more than capable uh, of playing that title. Uh, Bart says, on Wednesday, I noticed I could sign into Teams for consumers on the web with my personal Microsoft account via teams.live.com. The desktop app is not accessible just yet. Any idea when the desktop app will become available for people with a personal Microsoft account? Yeah, um, I believe it's December. I believe it's December is when they're going to announce that. If you remember, there was a bunch of sort of a bunch of people, myself included, read on a Microsoft change log that, hey, they're bringing multi accounts to the desktop app in December. And then there was a separate item like completely detached from that one that says, hey, we're also working to bring personal accounts to teams in December. So we're probably about a month ish away. So when when you will be able to log into teams using your personal account on your desktop and Matt Thinus says, so how much does uh, how much does that X on the power button of the Series X bother you being on its side. Mine is horizontal as well, and it does not make me too happy. Um, so what he's talking about here is that my Series X is in my my entertainment cabinet, and it's on its side, and it's not perfectly centered. And it, it does bother me, but it's at the end of the day, I, I look at the screen and not the console, and so it's not that big of a uh, it's not that big of a deal. So I mean, that's just kind of. <laughs> that's just kind of it so that's kind of been it this week guys like it was one of those things where a lot happened but it was already so well covered leading up to this event that not really a lot i mean consoles went out we all knew that um microsoft released dotnet 5.0 we knew that was gonna happen um we it was just a lot of everything that we have been planning for happening this week finally happened and then that's just not nearly as exciting that it has already happened so there you go, guys. As always, the questions come in favorite part of my week. And don't forget to check out Devolutions at RemoteDesktopManager.com for sponsoring this podcast. We very much appreciate those guys uh, hanging out with us. And we'll catch all of you right back here next time.